Hey crafty people, welcome back to my channel. And in case you're new here, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd, cause I'm a nerd who loves to craft. I do paper crafting, card making, junk journaling, and mixed media art. Let's get crafting. Okay, it's time to work on another crafting PhD, which if you don't know, stands for Project Half Done. And this is a project I started last year. So it's been sitting around forever waiting to get finished. So the first part of this video it was filmed like a year ago. And so that's what you're going to see now. And probably this is going to be broken down into two videos because there's a lot going into it because it's a mixed media project. So let's watch what happened last year because I don't remember. So I picked up this box at Joanne Fabrics and it was half off. And we're going to create a little mixed media which is lab scene inside. So I've already pulled out some bits and pieces. So I've got the candies from, these are Tim Holtz Ideology, the Halloween candies. This is last year's broomstick. The broomstick for this year is a little bit different. Um, we're gonna use that. I've grabbed some popsicle sticks and just little craft sticks from my stash. I picked those up at either Joanne's or Michael's. Some of these bottles are Tim Holtz Ideology and some possibly the dollar store and possibly other locations. I've got a whole bunch of them and they're not in their original packaging. So these are, if you ever built like stacking cube furniture, they give you little caps that you can stick in the holes for the top piece kind of thing. So I have a bunch of those in my stash. I thought they made cute little oops, mushrooms. So we're gonna paint those up and turn them into little mushrooms. Uh, this is a pumpkin from last year's ideology that I snagged. And I don't remember off the top of my head where I was planning on using that in this project. Uh, spider charm, also uh, ideology. Um, and we're gonna use that. I picked these up from a shop online, I don't know, several years ago, but I thought this would be also a cool item to add to our shelves. And then these are dowels left over from probably the same, same assembly project as that, that I figured we could use to make some interesting like brackets for the shelves, I think was why I grabbed them. But so those are some of the bits and pieces we're going to use to create our little witches scene. Now, one thing I am planning on doing for this is I'm not using this as the base for my scene and I want to use tiny lights. And so I want to be able to run them behind a piece. So what I'm going to end up doing is creating a piece that's going to sit in the box and I'm going to put chipboard along the edges to have it have something for it to sit on. If that makes sense. So we can also have a cutout window that lights up that has, you know, the night sky behind it kind of thing and our shelves. So that's one of the things I'm going to do. What I think I'm going to start with for this project is kind of prepping some of the pieces that are going to go in it before we start on building the base. Um, and I'm also planning on putting some books on the bookshelf. So, and, and a cauldron, which again, another ideology piece. And in my cauldron are some uh, ideology bubbles, which we are gonna color with alcohol inks. So that's gonna go down here. And there may be some other stuff we add as we go along. Now, if you don't have craft sticks to use to make your shelves, you can make them out of chipboard, several layers of paper, whatever you have at hand. One of those things I pulled a bunch of stuff out and I'm trying to remember now why I pulled some of the stuff out because I think I'm going to use this to create my shelves and I'm going to probably put more than one layer together to make it a little thicker. Um, so this first step is to decide how far out I want my shelves to go. And so one of the shelves is going to get a bunch of bottles. That's going out, yay far. So it's not quite three inches. So I'll probably do the shelf out three inches. So we're gonna start by cutting these down to three inches. Actually, let's leave all of this stuff in here and set it aside for now. 
Now I've got the chopper, which will help with cutting down my popsicle sticks. If you don't have this, you can use a craft knife and a ruler. And in fact, I think with these, because of the thickness, or maybe it was these I was cutting recently, I needed to use a craft knife. Anyway, I'm gonna start by marking off three inches since that's how big we decided to do our shelf. I'm just gonna take a pencil and mark it three inches and line it up in here and chop and chop and I think we're gonna bring our mark around and try just chopping again on this side. So we're close to through. Let's, oh, there we go. And look at that, that's almost perfectly in half. So I am just gonna try shaving off that little bit. That we don't need so that there. There we go. So we've got the two pieces that I'm going to piece together for our shelf. Um, so those are three inches wide and I'm going to sand it down. Now, I think I want a slightly shorter shelf to go above and I think I'm gonna stick with the, the squared off ones instead of the round popsicle sticks. And let's cut this one down to two and a half instead of three. So I'll mark two and a half on this side, two and a half on this side, and cut those. cut a little bit off that didn't cut cleanly and I will pull out a sanding block here in a minute and sand everything off and then we need to double layer it so I'm gonna do another two and a half and actually I'm gonna switch which side I'm cutting from because this side's a little janky from the first cut There we go, that's all cut through. Grab a sanding block and just quickly sand off our rough edges. And I'm just gonna glue the two pieces together. And I've got some wood glue, so I'm gonna use the wood glue to do that. Apparently my wood glue does not want to open today. So I'm gonna use one of my little silicone spatulas and I'm gonna pour a little glue out onto it. and just add a thin layer of the glue to glue our two pieces together. Clean up any excess glue. And do the same for this guy. Now I suspect like art glitter glue would work for this and you could probably use just regular old, you know, plain white PVA school glue would probably work, but I've got the wood glue and the wood glue is the best choice for gluing wood. So why not use my wood glue? All right. So we're gonna let those dry. It's, they're a little, they're not laying as neatly flat together as the other one. So I think I'm probably going to clamp this and let it dry with clamps on it. Only downside with using wood glue is it does take a good bit of time to dry. 
So I'm just gonna leave that stuff to dry and work on other elements. Now for our bottles, I wanna fill them with a variety of things. So let's pull out our little bottles. And our mushrooms. So I want to give our bottles like an age cracked look. Best way to do that is with crackle paste, but I have a problem with it sticking to uh, glass bottles. So what I think I'm gonna try doing, first do a quick clean of them with rubbing alcohol, uh, which is also known as isopropyl alcohol. But I also think, in addition to doing that, what I'm gonna do first is, I picked up clear gesso. I don't remember why I picked up clear gesso. <laughs> I picked it up for a project, I know, I'm sure. I am just gonna do a thin coat of clear gesso on my jars because that should give the jar a little bit more tooth so that when I add the, um, crackle paste, it should stick better in theory. So I'm just going to do a thin coat over all my bottles of clear gesso. Okay, so I've got Distress Crackle Paint Clear Rock Candy, and our bottles are dried. Now, the clear gesso did make them a bit cloudy, but I'm okay with that. That kind of fits in with what we are doing. Um, so now I am going to apply the crackle paint, and I'm going to use a brush for that. Now, generally speaking, Crackle paint, the cracks are bigger, the thicker the coat you put on. So if you want fine line cracks, thinner. Um, if you want thicker, bigger cracks, put a thicker coat of the crackle paint on. So I'm just gonna go around and add some crackle paint. All right, so our bottles are all dry, and I don't know how well you can see the crackling. I am gonna take my Vintage Photo Distress Crayon, and I'm gonna put a little on my mat with a little bit of water, because I have found I tend to have issues when I apply it directly to the piece. And actually, let's do a little bit more on here. too much water All right. and I'm just going to because what we want to do is bring out the cracks by getting some crayon into the cracks Okay, so we're gonna go directly on and just go light-handed and see if we can bring out the cracks without rubbing the stuff off, which is what tends to happen when I do this. Okay. 
get my finger a little damp. So, see, I'm trying to get it into the cracks to bring them out. I don't know if you can hear the rain. It is currently pouring out, which has my dog pouting in the other room because he likes to be out in the yard, but not so much when it's pouring down rain. So he's not a happy fellow right now. He's definitely giving me the um, mom, why can't you make it stop raining look? So there's our first bottle all done. I'm going to do it to all the other ones, pretty much the same technique. Um, and I'll be back when those are all finished. All right. So here are what our bottles all look like. Now this one's going to get our mushrooms. Those guys over. So what I'm going to do with these because they're made of plastic is I think I'm going to give them a quick coat of gesso just to give it a little bit of tooth. Um, so that when I paint them, the paint will stick better. So I'm just going to go and give all of these plastic mushrooms a quick coat white gesso so that they'll be easier to paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and take care of that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got them all covered with gesso and well, except for that one. They're all dry. Um, what I'm gonna do is for the bottom part of the mushrooms, I am gonna use pumice stone distress paint. Just put a little on here and coat the bottom of the mushrooms. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up painting the bottom of everybody and then we'll come back and do the tops and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got our mushrooms painted, at least the bottoms are painted. Now the tops I am going to use uh, mixed media green gold. I think I have a feeling this is going to require a couple coats because it's a uh, translucent um, and distress paint wilted violet. Cause I figure these are, cause I figure these are witches told stools that she's using in her brewing her potions. So they should be funky colors. So again, I'm just gonna go through, whoop, try and put them down so that I don't end up smooshing the paint onto my mat instead of leaving it on the mushroom. Um, and just go through and give the mushrooms tops a coat of paint in purple and green. So there are purple mushrooms and then I'm just gonna do some green ones. Yeah, I'm probably going to do a second coat on the green just to get full coverage since it's a translucent paint. I'm just going to let those guys dry and I'll come back once they're dry. Um, and we're probably going to add maybe a little distressed crayon just to grunge them a little bit because 
the, the purple's really bright. Um, but I'll be back. So I decided for one of the little glass vials, we are gonna do spider legs. And what I've got here is just some matte medium and embroidery floss. And you can use whatever kind of glue you'd like. And I'm just running the pieces of embroidery floss through the matte medium. And then we're just gonna leave those to dry. And once they're dry, it'll make the threads stiffer and we can just cut them to size to be spider legs in our potion jars. So, just gonna finish doing those and let those dry. And again, then we can cut them up and they'll be little spider legs. Okay, so we are going to fill, fill our uh, witch's spell supply bottles. So we've got our little glass jars. Our toadstools are dry, so they're just gonna get popped into this little jar. And I think we might have made a few too many. I don't think they're all gonna fit. Oh, well, maybe, maybe. So we've got our jar of toadstools. Put the little top on that. That one can get set aside. This one we are gonna put our spider legs. And so our pieces of thread are all are all dry and see they're they're firmer than they would be just as thread. So let's pull these guys off and trim them down a little bit. Oh, that one's sticking. That one maybe had a little too much glue around it. All right, so for ones where you get like sticky glueage, you can just peel that off. And we're just gonna cut them into smaller pieces. Like this one, I think probably get cut in half and I need to go deal with dogs. Too long. So yeah, just trim them down so that they'll fit in there as our little spider legs. All right, so there we go. We've got a jar full of little spider legs. I Distressing the outside is definitely making it a little hard to see what exactly is in the jars, um, but that's okay. I think they're still cool looking. All right, so this jar, we are going to put bat wings in. And this is from the new Tim Holtz Halloween 2023 release. I We'll put the information about it down below. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Now, a lot of these aren't gonna fit in the little <laughs> jar I've got. So we're gonna go with the smaller ones. And this is, ooh, I die cut them out of glassine paper that I had coffee dyed. But I also wanna add a little bit more uh, ink to them. So I am going to grab hickory smoke and a brush and I'm just gonna put down a scrap piece of paper to protect my surface. And we're just gonna add a little bit more color to our bat wings. And then we're gonna cut off his wing and toss it in our jar. So we're gonna have a jar of bat wings. Now, if you don't have this dye, but you have another bat dye that will cut small wings, you could use that. You could hand cut them out. You know, this is, this is one of those things, use what you got.
So there's our little jar of bat wings. Let me try adjusting them a little using some tweezers just to kind of I don't know that that's working at all. <laughs> so there we go. We now have a jar of bat wings. And last but not least, we are going to make Eye of Newt. And I'm going to use some golden clear granule gel. You could also use, you got the Liquitex glass beads. They're um, pretty much the same thing. Let me open it up and show you. So it's a texture paste that's got little like glass beads in it. Um, and they're pretty much about the same size. This is this is one of those, I ended up buying stuff not realizing I already had basically the same thing. So let's just go with the golden this time. And what I'm gonna do is take a palette knife and some Distress Ink Twisted Citron Reinker because I want to make our eyes of Newt green so I'm just gonna put a little on my palette add a drop because you don't want to add too much liquid to this of the twisted citron then we're gonna mix it up got nice bright neon green and this is gonna dry pretty much translucent I think not sure it should, with the Distress Ink, still dry somewhat translucent. Now the fun part's gonna be getting it in without having it all over the inside edges. The little skinny craft popsicle stick thing, and I'm going to use it to push my Eye of Newt down inside. Okay, I have a feeling this is gonna be a big old messy project here. All right, so there's our Eye of Newt bottle. Now this is going to take a good long time to dry. So we're gonna just set that aside for a while. Now I want my bottles, my jars to have some kind of label on them, but I didn't wanna put something across the front cause then you wouldn't see what's in them at all. So I die cut out a bunch of little tags using, it's a, one of the Tim Holtz chapter three. I don't remember which set it's from. I'll leave it listed down below. And we're obviously going to distress them up a little bit um, to make them look old and ragged. And I'm gonna kind of crumple them up and we'll write on them what's in each. Again, so I don't have to clean off my surface. And I'm gonna just come in with hickory smoke again, I think, and ink this up. And I think I'm also gonna grab a little black slut. And I'm just gonna use a little makeup dauber to kinda 
get on there, try and get some of the creases to show up better, or get the edges. So now we've got, and I think to further with our distressing, I think I want to bring in some brown just to, to get it more, I don't know, add some more interest to our distressing. We've got some walnut stain over here, so we're just going to add some of that too. It just kind of adds a little bit more depth to the color. Then we can just, oh, you know what? I need to get the backs of those. All right, and then I'm just gonna write on them with whatever fine line pen I can find. And I'm just gonna write things like, I love Newt. Toadstools, bat wings, and spider legs. So I'll get out some thread to tie them around the neck of each bottle so that they've got their little labels going on. So let me go find some thread and I'll be right back. So I've grabbed some um, dark gray thread and I'm gonna cut a bit off stick it through our little label and just do a slip knot for the label so And then we can tie the label around our bottle. I'm gonna use my tweezers to help me pull the threads through. I'm gonna tie it as a double knot so that it stays because yeah it's it's slipping and a sliding and I find tweezers really handy for stuff like this What I really need to do is go across the room and get my other tweezers because these are on the older side and so don't there there's there's a gap between they don't they don't close as solidly as they might. So let's make sure that's nice and tight. So there that's got its little label. And we'll just trim off the excess and do that for all of our bottles. So you see me do one. I don't think you need to watch me struggle to tie knots on all of these. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put the knots on all of the bottles or the labels on all of our bottles. All right. So here we have our toadstools. Our bat wings, which you can kind of see them in the jar. Our spotter legs. And 
and our Eye of Newt, which I will leave uncovered until this fully dries inside, which is probably going to take at least a week, <laughs> I suspect. So I'm going to set that aside to dry. I'm going to set these guys aside for now and come back and work on the next part of the project. Okay, so I haven't watched the footage from last year yet, um, but I want to get working on this piece. And so I've done a couple things off camera. I die cut out a window because I want a window in our um, scene. And it's, uh, I used, this is a door die from a uh, Lawn Fawn house set. I will leave the name of it down below because I don't remember which one it was, whether it's the one that goes with the mushroom house or the pumpkin house, one of those. Um, and I realized as I was playing around with this, I previously cut these strips to lift this up so we could run the lights behind. And uh, I realized if I did that, the book won't close with our cauldron in place. And I'm actually having second thoughts. I have a different ideology cauldron. So this is the one I was originally planning. I'm thinking maybe of using the slightly larger higher up one um, that has feet. So haven't decided yet. We'll, we'll stay tuned. Um, but as a result, the little half inch spacers I put on don't leave enough room for the door to close when I have the cauldron in. So I went in and went ahead and cut some uh, quarter inch pieces. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and glue these guys in at this point so that I don't have to worry about them. All right, now let's dry fit the rest of the pieces. That'll go down there. There's a bit of a gap, but that's all right. This will, it, the idea behind this is just to lift this up a little bit off the ground, you know, so it's not laying flat so that I can run the lights behind. So we just need some space between this piece and the very bottom. So it does not have to be perfect. Push that down all the way there. Because what I've got is the Tim Holtz tiny lights and I'm gonna run at least some of them around the window to give a glow um, for that. So yeah, this is gonna work all right. Let's go ahead and glue the rest of these pieces in gonna kind of tip this up so that I can see. Can you actually see what's going on? Woo! Tilt that. Okay, you can see what's going on down there. For some reason, this side is not a happy side. Okay, I think we're I think we're good to go to the next step. So the next step is to give this whole thing a base coat of paint, and I'm gonna do that with pumice stone. So whatever, and this is distress paint, but whatever gray paint you have will work for this step. And I am gonna paint this because I'm gonna die cut a few more out to give our window some more like oomph. Um, so this is just going to be giving the actual pieces that we're going to use something to like perch on top of. 
if that makes any sense, so that it's not recessed into the hole. It'll make sense when we get to that part. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a good coat of paint. And while this is drying, I also want to paint our shelves. That shelf, that shelf, and I grabbed a couple of brown distress paints. So I've got brush corduroy, vintage photo, and walnut stain. I'm going to add a bit of water, which I apparently don't have any spray bottles over here with water in them, so we're just going to use a little cap. And of course, my dog wants out because I just sat down. I'm just going to add a little bit of water. Now, um, distress paints are water reactive, um, and what I want to do is kind of create more of a wash than a full-on paint on these. I'm just getting a little more water on my brush because I want the, you know, the fact that this is actually made out of wood to show. And you can um, get the distress paint to move with water until it's dry and then it's permanent. All right, I am gonna leave those to dry and go deal with the dog and then I'll be back. Okay, so I just did a quick coat of um, paint on this, so it's dry already, and I am going to use my Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous stencil, and it's THMM112 for, like, the brick wall effect, and I'm going to use Distress Grip Paste Crypt, and I already pulled the little piece of cling wrap I had in here out. This stuff is starting to dry out on me. I've got another bottle jar either somewhere in my house or on order. So yeah, moral of the story, use your stuff, because it will go bad. I think I'll be able to get this to work, but it's just going to take a little bit more fiddling than a fresh jar would, and... So I am not going to bore you with watching me fight with getting the grit paste on this whole thing, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll be back. So here's what uh, the wall looks like with the paste dry. And this is where we're gonna stop for today. So if you enjoyed this video, please do all the things that lets YouTube know you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.